So Conrad, here we are next and it's really nice to see you again in person. It's been a while. Likewise, since 2018, so it's great to get together again. Time flies with COVID. Anyway, uh, you have been talking to people here about everything that's going on in Aztec, about BIPs, and there's quite a lot going on. Tell me a bit more about it. But well, you're spot on. It, since the December of last year, so over the last four months or so, there's been a real acceleration in ASPAC in terms of developments. So in particular, you have Asia Pacific jurisdictions essentially joining the waves of IR roulette that are occurring at the moment. You've got Japan, Korea, and tentatively also Vietnam uh, moving to bring in IAR from uh, 2024. So in that regard, they join Canada, the UK, and several EU member states. And at the same time, you've had a number of other ASPAC jurisdictions, such as Hong Kong, Singapore, Thailand, and, and tentatively Malaysia, uh, confirming for 2025. So a lot of the ASPAC jurisdictions have already put their cards on the table as such. Uh, now, in terms of QDMTT, the jurisdictions can vary whether they bring it in at the same time as IAR or in a later year. And of course, in terms of UTPR, you've got the curious case of Korea, which initially indicated they would have that um, in effect from 2024. Uh, they've held off on that a little bit now, and it's expected that later in the summer they'll confirm whether it is indeed 2024 or whether they'll move it to 2025. Because that's earlier than everyone else. That's, that would be earlier than everyone else, and I think that, that uh, rattled a few cages. So um, the Koreans themselves have to consider whether that's a, a road they want to go down. But we'll, we'll find out uh, fairly soon. And in terms then of what that means at the corporate level, the fact that uh, you have confirmations that the countries are moving means that uh, enterprises headquartered in, in the region and outside the region as well have been accelerating their efforts with impact assessments, with pre-regime actions on restructuring, with doing their data gap analysis and figuring out, are, are they truly ready for this? And an area that causes a lot of concern is financial reporting and the globe implications for financial reporting. And of course, the financial uh, reporting implications uh, take effect long before any globe tax is paid or any filings are made. And of course, the key question there is substantive enactment for accounting purposes. Um, and with Korea and Japan, they both passed legislation already. Uh, however, the legislation is more skeletal in form, and there's further government issuances to come containing the detailed rules, and it's only when those come out that we can say the rules are substantive being enacted. And um, so you have a lot of groups then examining, okay, when it becomes substantively enacted, uh, what disclosures will I need to make? <clears throat> and very recently, the IASB um, uh, confirmed uh, that for IS-12 purposes, they will have um, an exemption from deferred tax for a globe uh, tax, which would have been terrifically difficult to do. But in place of that, various disclosures on where am I paying the tax, um, what are my low tax jurisdictions, triggering tax, and quantitative assessments and so on. They're, they're firming up on that, but that's a key focus for the companies. The other thing that's uh, of particular interest is the direction of travel with incentives in ASB because the ASPAC landscape is defined by tax incentives. And in particular, the, the kind of tax incentives that are very exposed to GLOBE, they're not refundable tax credits typically, they're things like tax holidays, super demolitions, and so on, which are very exposed. But we're starting to see uh, indications of where ASPAC jurisdictions might go with that. Um, number one, they might, from tax holidays to incentive rates around 10 or 15%, something more sustainable going forward more of a focus on grants in certain jurisdictions, because these are less affected by GLOBE. Uh, other possibilities are, and, and particularly uh, businesses are suggesting this as a, as a route, better expat taxation. If the corporate tax benefits go away, that's something that can help the businesses. But other innovative ideas, for example, um, in Thailand, they're setting up a competitiveness fund or, or, or expanding it further into which they would put their QDMTT revenue and then that would be used for further incentives. So that uh, cover ideas like that. And um, the, the final uh, area and uh, just uh, interlinked with this agenda is public CBCR. And Australia recently made moves in this space. And that would require businesses um, with operations in Australia to make disclosures on their low ETRs outside Australia as well. Um, uh, and that will be linked to the Pillar 2 calculation. So a lot happening in the Pillar 2 space and the broader Pillar 2 space, and that's back in a worth monitoring. 
So that's a lot. So the incentives point is really interesting because, as you said, so many of the countries award incentives. Like, I can only imagine everyone's sort of thinking about what to do mm. to maintain their competitive position. Yeah, precisely. Tell me a little bit more about this Australian public reporting. So that would apply to foreign parents at mm. multinational groups. Yeah, Australian and from the yeah. and to the extent that they have uh, Australian operations. And, and certainly our KPMG Australia team are, are fiendishly busy field inquiries from around the world at the moment, people wanting to know uh, precisely what will need to be put out there, uh, the interactions between disclosures they might make there, and then disclosures in their financial statements, mm. or other transparency initiatives and maintaining consistency. Yeah. And this would be a real uh, challenge. Yeah, because I can only imagine once you put something out in public, you just want to make sure that it's not inadvertently misstating or misrepresenting the Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there could simply be different approaches to the calculation, but they could be misinterpreted as being um, purposely consistent. Yeah. Well, gosh, Corey, no wonder you have been really busy over the last three days. There's a lot going on. Well, that's why I drink so much coffee. <laughs> okay, thank you for your time today, Rabbit.